So here we are exploring calculus with vector valued functions. So we're going to be looking at the differentiation and the integration of vector valued functions and relating this to our knowledge of scalar valued functions from Calc 1 and Calc 2. So to get us started, we are going to look at the differentiation of vector valued functions. So to begin, let's go ahead and let vector r of t be defined by f of t i hat, g of t j hat, h of t k hat, where f, g, and h are all differentiable functions of our arbitrary parameter t. So then differentiating both sides of this function, this vector valued function, with respect to our arbitrary parameter t, we are left with the following. Then the derivative of vector r with respect to t is going to be equal to the derivative of f with respect to t, i hat, plus the derivative of g with respect to t, j hat, plus the derivative of h with respect to t, k hat. Or we can use an alternative notation. So this is equivalent to saying vector r prime of t is equal to f prime of t i hat plus g prime of t j hat plus h prime of t k hat. Or we could use our vector component form, whichever one you prefer. So we can see here that we can differentiate a vector valued function component by component for simplicity. And now before we go on to looking at the differentiation rules, I want you to make one note or an observation here about our vector valued function r prime of t. So the vector r prime of t points in the direction of the curve at point t or point p. So r prime of t points in the direction of the curve of the curve vector r of t at some point p. Similar to what we know from scalar valued functions. And now for this reason, we say that r prime of t is a tangent vector at some point, as long as it's not the zero vector. So we say that r prime of t is a tangent vector or velocity vector at point p. And again, this is as long as it's not the zero vector. So provided that r prime of t does not equal the zero vector. All right, so let's go ahead now and explore some of the differentiation rules and properties of vector valued functions. So we now need to explore some of the properties of the derivative of a vector valued function. And now most of those differentiation rules that we know from calculus one are gonna hold true for vector valued functions. And we also have a, new, a few new friends to be introduced to. So here we go. To begin, we wanna let vector r and vector u be differentiable vector valued functions of t. And we're also gonna let f be a differentiable scalar valued function of t. We also need to go ahead and let c be any scalar our little hearts desire. So these first few rules are going to be familiar. Number one is the constant multiple rule. So let's suppose that we are differentiating with respect to t a scalar multiple of our vector valued function r of t. Well, we can go ahead and pull that scalar c to the outside of our derivative. So we have c multiplied by d dt of that vector valued function r of t, which of course leaves us with c multiplied by the tangent vector or c times vector r prime of t. Another familiar friend is the sum and difference rule. So let's suppose here that we are, again, differentiating with respect to t, the sum or difference of two 
vector valued functions. We have vector r of t plus or minus vector u of t. So we can differentiate each of these vector valued functions separately. This is going to leave us with r prime of t plus or minus vector u prime of t. The product rule is another good old friend. And now here we have to be careful because we know that there are several multiplication operations with vectors. When we're talking about the product rule, this is going to be the product of a vector valued function and a scalar valued function. So let's suppose that we are taking the derivative with respect to that arbitrary parameter t of the product of vector r of t with the scalar valued function f of t. So this is going to be equal to the derivative of vector r of t multiplied by f of t plus the original vector valued function r of t multiplied by the derivative of this scalar valued function f of t. Now with number four, property number four, the dot product rule, this is going to be when we have the product of two vector valued functions. So let's suppose that we are differentiating with respect to t the product of vector r of t with vector u of t. So we have the dot product of these two vector valued functions and the differentiation is very similar to the product rule. So we're going to be left with the sum of two dot products. We have vector r prime of t dotted with the original vector u of t plus the original vector r of t dotted with the derivative of vector u of t. So property number five, our cross product rule, is when we are taking the cross product of two vector valued functions. So let's suppose that we are differentiating here with respect to t, the cross product of vector r of t with vector u of t. So this is going to leave us with the sum of two cross products. So this is going to be the derivative of vector r of t crossed with the original vector valued function u of t plus vector r of t crossed with the derivative of vector u of t. Now I want you to be mindful here with properties number four, the dot product rule, and number five, the cross product rule. You can differentiating, differentiate using these formal definitions, but it's going to be more efficient to actually perform the vector operation first. So these formal definitions are great for theory versus with computation, we're going to want to compute the dot product and then differentiate or compute the cross product and then differentiate the result. And you'll get the same answer both ways. So I encourage you to play around with them, but keep this in mind as you, as you work through some of the examples. Now, last but not least, property number six is the chain rule. So with the chain rule, we are going to be differentiating with respect to t, the composition of our vector valued function r with the scalar valued function f of t. So we differentiate this just like we would a normal chain rule. This is going to be the derivative of the outside function, hold your inside constant. So that's the derivative of vector r of t. And then we multiply this by the derivative of that scalar valued function, f prime of t.